Hello and welcome to the English Like a Native podcast, the listening resource for intermediate to advanced level English learners. My name is Anna. And my name is Nick. And today we are going to be bringing in the new year with some good old resolutions. New year, new me is a phrase you'll often hear in January. The beginning of a new year is seen by many as an occasion to turn over a new leaf and start with a clean slate. Now, some people decide to give up unhealthy habits, such as drinking alcohol mm -hmm. or eating chocolates Ooh. every day. <laughs> Others see the start of the new year as an occasion to pick up new hobbies. Mm, personally, I find myself being a little too optimistic and ambitious at the beginning of the new year, which has led me to set unrealistic milestones. However, it's still something I do every year. Do you set resolutions, Nick? I don't. Now, there is one year where I did specifically set a New Year's resolution. Go on, I'm intrigued. Tell me. It was when I was finding things very difficult and I had taken on too many things. I was studying outside of work every day. I was managing a side hustle and I'd taken on a promotion. Far too many things. Mm -hmm. I was traveling all over the place and I was really focused on the ideals of a better life rather than living the life that I had at the time. Okay, so you were kind of looking ahead and maybe overstretching yourself, trying to achieve something more rather than just being grateful for the things that you had at the time. Yes, that's right. And so I set one specific New Year's resolution, which was to relax a little bit, mm -hmm. to enjoy what I already had and be grateful that it was enough and to take a lot off my plate. And it was successful and it was very successful because it didn't need very much to do. Actually, I had to do less. Right. So when you say take a lot off your plate, we talk about our plate, don't we, a lot when talking about our responsibilities and the amount of responsibilities we pile onto our plate. It's a metaphorical plate that we have. And if we have a lot of things to do, then we have a lot on our plate. So that's something I might say to someone when they bring something new to me. Anna, would you like to help out with the planning the, the school fair? I'm like, mm, I, I'd love to do that, but I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. That means I've got a lot of things going on and too many responsibilities to cope. So in your example there at that time in your life you had too many th things to do too much responsibility so you wanted to take some things off your plate yeah it's a lovely metaphor isn't it because if you sit at the table and you've got all the food on your plate and someone says do you want some more parsnips at christmas and you say no that's fine i have a lot on my plate you're you know you're saying i've got enough to try and consume yeah as it is and if i have any more it's going to feel sick. I'm not going to be able to manage it. Yeah. And actually, I won't be able to consume the things that you're giving me. Yeah. It's just too much. That reminds me of a lovely phrase, which is completely unrelated, but I'm going to throw it in there, which is when you put too much on your plate, yeah. literally, then you could say, oh my goodness me, your eyes are bigger than your belly. Yeah. <laughs> you think that you're going to eat all that, but you can't possibly eat all that. Your eyes are bigger than your belly. But enough about food, enough about bellies. Tell us your ambition to reduce the amount of things on your plate. Uh, was it successful? Yes, it was. I mean, there's a lot in New Year's resolutions around, um, you know, being grateful for things, right? And th thinking about how you can live a better life. And for me, it, you know, I, I think this is why it was successful is I stopped the formal qualifications I was doing. I stopped the side hustle. I focused on my main job and being successful there. And I focused on um, enjoying the things that I had and giving myself time to do those things. So a lot of people, when they have a New Year's resolution, they add more things to their plate, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. how's that looked for you in the past? 
Yeah, I've often started new projects at the new year point I always think oh yes this would be a great time to start um, posting every day on one of my many social medias and I'm gonna start a new business so I'm always very ambitious in that respect that and doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> it it hasn't worked very well for many people resolutions tend to fail within a few months of starting them because they're overreaching they are doing too much but <laughs> Resolutions can still be quite successful if you do it in the right way, like you said. But let's now turn to some vocabulary that you could use to talk about resolutions and starting afresh. So starting afresh would be one phrase that you could use or to start with a clean slate. Let's dig into that. What is a slate? So a slate slate is a stone. And um, we put it on our roofs, don't we? Yeah, we put it on our roofs. We use it for laying a patio. So having a nice stone patio to enjoy. I think that slate was also used for things like painting in the past. You'd have a, a painter's slate and for holding other things. And for writing in the classroom before yeah. paper was a thing. Chalk. People would, would teach children with a, a slate a piece of slate and chalk. And that's how they would write. They'd write on slate and then they could wipe the slate clean when they wanted to start again. And so that's where I'm assuming, I haven't actually researched this, but I'm assuming that's where the phrase comes from, to wipe the slate clean. It means to start again. Yeah. And once they got past slate and started using paper, then you would have a, a clean sheet a clean sheet. Yeah, a clean. Mm. Yeah, not the sheets on your bed. No. <laughs> Although it's good to have clean sheets every now and again. OK, so you can start with a clean slate. So to make a fresh start, forgetting about any past mistakes or you could. Turn over a new leaf. Yes. And I think both of these refer to a little bit like my situation. Right. I gave that example of that things were a bit of a mess. You know, it, if. You're trying to write a, a story on your slate with your chalk and your teacher comes over and they go, look, I know you've got the right essentials here, but let's start again. Let's clean the slate, turn over a new leaf, right? And then you've got a nice blank piece of paper to start articulating your new life story mm -hmm. in a really clear and intentional way. But when we say turn over a new leaf, do we actually mean like the leaf that would come off a tree. No, I don't know where it comes from, actually. Well, I think a leaf is um, another way of referring to a page in a book. Yeah. So from my point of view, or in my opinion, it would be, I should research this, shouldn't I? Should, yes. <laughs> to turn over a new leaf is to turn over a new page in a book, metaphorically. And so in life, if you have been doing something that hasn't been working out for you or perhaps you have unhealthy habits, perhaps you're addicted to junk food and sugar. I've certainly been a sugar addict in the past and you're deciding, no, I want to live a healthier lifestyle next year. So now or from now on. And so now I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to start fresh, change things and do things differently. When talking about bad habits, we can use the phrasal verb to give up. So to give something up, this is a very common phrase, isn't it? It's to stop doing something that has been very prominent in your life. So have you given up anything recently, Nick? I'm a bit of a goody two-shoes, actually. Oh, are you? And I think for, for me, now we've gone through a bit of a journey on food, mm -hmm. haven't we? We have. And I think I've gone through a slow and I would say yet to be fully successful giving up of alcohol. OK. Because and I don't think I'll ever fully give it up because I like a little tipple every now and again. Yeah. So you're you understand that for you, alcohol shouldn't be a, a major feature in your life. Mm -hmm. You want to give it up, mm -hmm. but you struggle to give it up completely. Yes. And now I think some people have, particularly when it's linked to either their social life or their work life, they have alcohol as a habitual part of their week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's very hard socially 
or if your bosses are like, hey, come to the pub after work or let's go to a restaurant. I'm going to buy a nice bottle of wine for everyone to thank the team for all their hard work. And then they go to pour a glass for you and you say, oh, no, thank you. I don't drink anymore. It can feel a bit awkward, can't it? There's that kind yeah. of social expectation of partaking in in consuming alcohol. And it can be difficult to say, no, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, especially in advance when someone says, OK, we're all going to go out for a night out on the 21st yeah. or whenever, right? Yeah. Do you want to come? And you think, oh, God, that I'd like to go and socialize. I'd like to spend some time. To be honest, I'd like to go and have fun with people in my team. But I think I've certainly matured out of drinking a lot of alcohol. I'm so conscious of the consequences to your immediate life and the future life as well. You're talking about hangovers. <laughs> hangovers. It's not just hangovers, though. It's also being woken up at 6.30 by children if you get in at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, um, that can be quite devastating. <laughs> after having a skinful. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so give up as a common phrase of verb. Another phrase of verb I'd like to introduce is to pick up. So this is the opposite of giving up. If you pick something up, then we're talking about starting or taking on a new habit or skill. So I once bought you a guitar for Christmas because I was hopeful that you might pick up the guitar, both literally and metaphorically pick up the skill of playing guitar I don't think you've picked it up once, have you? <laughs> you didn't pick first, up the skill, certainly. The first day, picked up a few new apps on my phone, that's for sure. Yeah, but, but I, I think, Anna, this is interesting, right? Because starting New Year's resolutions, often people think about stopping habits. But maybe a, a, a more aspirational thing to do is to start better habits, right? Mm -hmm. You can start good habits as well as end bad habits. So maybe swapping um spending three hours in front of the television in the evening swapping half of one of those hours to spend time doing something like learning the guitar would be <laughs> would be a more useful uh, way to spend your time yes yeah when was the last time you picked up a new habit or picked up a new skill picked up a new skill that's interesting well I've been learning woodwork over the last few years. You I? have, and you're actually fantastic with woodwork. I think I was a bit unfair when you first showed an interest in carpentry because, well, you wanted to do things around the house and I was quite happy for you to put up a few shelves, but I was a bit nervous when you talked about, you know, building full units and and making cupboards and I thought, well, this is just going to end up being an expensive hobby and a bit of a mess. But actually, I underestimated you and you've done some amazing things around the house and the house looks so much better for it, apart from the holes in the wall <laughs> that still need completing. But you have, that's a really useful skill to pick up, actually. And a great cost saver, right? And I tell you what, I could start hiring you out to mm. the local um, community as a carpenter. That could also be quite useful. Some other words that we might use when talking about new year and new year's resolutions well i think if you're giving up a habit then you know you might not use these words but certainly if you're starting a habit then you might be optimistic or mm. ambitious yeah. about what it might do to your life in the future what does it mean to be optimistic so optimistic means to have a positive outlook about the future to think really positively about the changes it's going to make or yeah. how successful you might be so if i were to start a, a podcast mm -hmm. <laughs> like this one if i were to start a podcast and it's something completely new i've never done it before but i feel quite positive about my chances of success then i'm quite optimistic about the the podcast right yes and if you thought that it was going to make you the most successful or your ambition with the podcast would be to be the most successful English teacher in the world, then you would say that you're also ambitious. Okay, so to be ambitious is to have strong ambitions, to have strong desires to achieve something. And you could refer to someone as being overly ambitious or too ambitious if you think that their goals are quite difficult or unlikely to be achieved. Mm. But it's good to be ambitious because that makes you work a little harder for the things that you want. Yeah. And I think they're interesting words to talk about at the same time because optimism is more about positivity 
of good things happening and ambition is more about success mm-hmm. and the, the goals that you set for yourselves are high a, a lofty ambitions and that you're going to get a lot back out of it right yeah so if you are optimistic then you are positive about your chances if you're ambitious then you have a strong desire to achieve those things yeah, and be successful because them. you can be optimistic and not actually work very hard to achieve your goals you just like i would call that kind of person a dreamer like oh yeah started a new podcast i don't really put out any episodes or tell anyone about it but i think it'll be successful that is an optimistic person mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe too optimistic but an ambitious person is someone who really desires that success and they'll work hard to achieve it so when talking about our goals we might set and measure milestones what is a milestone nick so A milestone is similar to a goal, but a goal tends to be referring to the end outcome. Uh And a milestone tends to be referring to points along the way. So if I wanted to achieve 100,000 downloads of my podcast, that is my goal. And maybe significant points along that way, like my first thousand downloads would be a milestone. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Or you could say that you wanted to have a very successful podcast and your milestones would be putting out your first one, having your first 1,000 downloads, getting to 10,000, having an amazing, articulate and charismatic co-host join you, (laughs) do collaborations. You know, these are all milestones, right? Mm -hmm. Things that you would set in, in your plan to get to the point where you would define your success yeah has determined by your goal the host that i use to to host the podcast the software that allows me to put this podcast out actually gives me milestone celebration emails so when i upload a certain number of episodes i get a little badge emailed to me saying congratulations you've hit 50 episodes and then a certain number of downloads as well i get these different badges which you know, it's like they're not my milestones. I don't care as much about them as it's as, nice they care, though, it, isn't it? It is, it is. It's nice to be reminded that I'm making progress. Yeah. Now, do you know where milestone, the word milestone came from? Go on, enlighten me. So, a long time ago, I don't know when it first started, but um, milestones are literal stones that were put each mile along a road. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, if there was a road from Bristol to London, then they would have had milestones to help people be aware of their progress over their journey. Interestingly, they still exist. They Uh they exist as modern milestones on motorways. So when you're driving along a motorway in the UK, they've got these little kind of steel sticks with, I think, yellow bands around them that are milestones that still exist. I don't know why anybody would use them. And the old milestones would say like 50 miles to London. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. So you had some idea... That you were making progress. And I think that's what milestones are there for, to remind you that although you might be losing sight of your goal and wondering why you're working so hard, it says, look, you're making progress. Keep going. It's kind of a way to egg you on, isn't it? Yeah, or remind you how far you got to go. (laughs) (laughs) And the milestones still litter, the old ones still litter the UK landscape. Yeah. So you find them every now and again around. Yeah. So the last two words that we want to introduce are pointless what's pointless if something is pointless then it has no point no point point being reason yeah so if something is pointless then it's reasonless can you give me an example of something an activity that would be pointless so for example if you were making a podcast Mm -hmm. putting your makeup on yes might be a bit pointless Yes, because no um, one sees your face. Yeah, unless you're trying to charm your co-hosts. Or <laughs> which, unless you have I a, hope you're enjoying mine. a reflective microphone and you can see yourself in the microphone. You're yeah. like, oh, that's a bit scary. Put a bit of makeup on that. Yeah. So something that doesn't help you to achieve your goal, I would say. It's pointless. Um, you know, like it's pointless. worrying about things. Mm. Sometimes or most of the time, worrying can be pointless. Yeah, worrying is a bit of an iceberg, isn't it, often? Yeah, it can make you more stressed and not think about things clearly and can make other people around you feel quite stressed and then it can make the environment quite unpleasant. So that 
that could be deemed as pointless. In some cases, worrying is quite important. Well, in some cases, worrying is counterproductive. Mm, yes. Yes, but we try and not make pointless resolutions. Some people do, don't they, make pointless resolutions. They might make them just to make themselves feel better. When I was younger, I had a, a collection. I collected bus tickets. That sounds pretty pointless. That, <laughs> that was completely pointless. I had bags and bags of <clears throat> bus tickets. And I think the reason I was collecting them was because I used to be a fan of a, a morning TV program that was on at seven in the morning called The Big Breakfast. Do you remember The Big Breakfast? I do remember The Big Breakfast. With Bre Gabby Breakfast. Roslin and Chris Evans. And, and they, Johnny Vaughan. Johnny Vaughan, mm. yeah. I think he was a little after I was watching it regularly. But they had a section in that program about like pointless collections and people would be featured with their pointless collections. And I thought, I'd love to be on The Big Breakfast. I must start a pointless collection. Sounds very like you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me spend a lot of effort doing something. Yeah, um, yeah. But opposite to pointless would be worthwhile. If something is worthwhile, then it's something that's worth doing. There's a good reason you have a good outcome for when you're doing it. Yes, I agree. And one of the hardest things to do is to determine the difference between things that are pointless and worthwhile when they might both look like good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most worthwhile thing you've done recently that you can think of? Had two wonderful children. Yes. <laughs> it certainly wasn't pointless. It's tiring, but they are worthwhile. Yes. Once we can get them making a cup of tea in the morning, that would be absolutely fantastic. That's very optimistic. Yeah. yeah. I would say our participation in the recent nutritional study, we both took part in a nutritional study lately where we kind of measured our own food responses. So how our body reacts to the foods that we eat in our day-to-day -day diet. And that's taught us both quite a lot. And we're still on this journey of uh, adjusting uh, our intake of food and trying to restrict alcohol. And I think that's been a very worthwhile activity because it's got a very valuable outcome, which is you know, better health, more energy, better moods, and hopefully we'll live a lot longer and have a, a, a longer health span at least. And, you know, again, this is something that's super interesting because if you did the study and you changed nothing about your life, would it have been worthwhile or would it have been pointless? Well, it would have been pointless, I guess. Pointless doing the study, right? Because so. there's no point in learning something unless you're going to put that learning into action. Mm. And there you go. That brings us all the way back round to setting New Year's resolutions. Yeah, there's no point in doing it unless you're going to follow through with it. Yeah, be consistent, take the right actions, set the goals, have milestones, follow through and make the changes that you desire yeah. to see in your life. And try to enjoy the journey. It's something that I say to the people who enroll on my fluency program is, you know, it shouldn't be all hard work. It should be fun and you have to make it a part of your daily life, which is why we really encourage community and we encourage people to get involved with our Telegram app and it becomes much more of a social, enjoyable learning experience. And yeah, participation is such a key element in learning a language, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. getting the practice that you need. Absolutely. OK, well, thank you, Nick. And uh, I You're wish you welcome. all the best for 2024. And for everybody listening, I do hope that this year is your year to make a positive impact on your life and your learning. If you want to get involved with the things that we do over at English Like a Native, then click on the link in the description to find out more about our fluency programme and other services we provide. Until next time, take very good care. And goodbye.